<laughs> I am unbelievably dizzy. Uh, oh, I don't like that. The mall is basically a culmination of every night out you can have with the homies. Or my homies. Uh, yeah, you hear this generic-ass guitar beat begin to play when you start the song, followed by vocals that sound like they were recorded and mixed underneath someone's covers and uh and on the surface it sounds really simple but in reality i was at rock bottom mentally and recording the song really allowed me to get back up and try to enjoy the little things again in this case going to the mall Yo, it's like I was in a damn hurricane. The idea for the track hit me almost instantly after one meetup that sort of marked as the turning point of that summer. And the same summer of the album that this track takes place on. It's also why you hear that one line in the hook, which at the time had people confused and shit, because they was like, summer after 20, got plenty 21, the fuck does that mean? Well, now you know. No, no, no. Dude, this is gonna kill you. Don't that be a pussy. Shit. Hey, yo, don't it's be a pussy. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> But yeah, one night we decided to get together and basically hit the mall, but we didn't just head there normally, nah. Uh, my uh, my friend, he had just got this old beat-up construction van that had no seats in the back. And like the post-high schoolers we were at the time, decided to take it for a spin. And you can imagine how that turned out. Uh, oh, shit! There wasn't anything back there but a bunch of leftover equipment, just lamps, fucking, I think there was a propane tank back there. Basically a bunch of dangerous shit. That's, that, that's what I'm trying to say. I'm not encouraging anyone else to replicate this, you know, like we could have really gotten hurt, but I guess that's what made it more fun. <laughs> I don't care how mad his parents get watching this video. Like that'll forever be one of the funnest things I've done as a teenager, as a stupid teenager, you know? But yeah, I didn't think about filming a video probably until a year or two later when I had officially dropped the song because I wrote the track in September of 2021, dropped it in February of 22. And then we started recording in September of that year. So it sort of, uh, it took a whole year for it to become like a full circle moment. And yeah. Oh, I, I didn't see you guys there. Uh. We're making a fucking music video. Don't know when it's gonna be out. Don't know if it is gonna come out. Don't know if people will actually wanna show up and help me. One thing's for sure, we're making a music video, so stay tuned. Definitely started to see the irony in the first few lyrics of the song. Uh, can we please, please, please film the fucking video. I can please, I'm changing the fucking oil tomorrow, bro. Saved. There's literally no dipstick. It's like. And this is Little good. did I know that trying to plan a filming crew would be just as difficult as planning a regular night out with the same friends if we weren't filming. How many miles slash how much time? Money. How often you get bitches? Uh, I don't really need those, so oh, I don't yeah, really need yeah, oil, yeah, man. Yeah, there we go, there we go. Uh, Since the track revolves around this sense of nostalgia, specifically that night in the van, gosh, that sounds so bad. Basically, I wanted to create sort of a narrative where the video sort of takes place on the same night, but also have it represent every other night out I've had with my friends in the past. Excuse me. I want a Big Mac. <laughs> Can I have a... A large cock. <laughs> large Coke. <laughs> I started writing the script mid-August and finished the first draft at the beginning of September. And around the same time, I got one of my friends to sort of help me plan farther into the project. He had some camera experience. He took like a, a year of intro to filming, audio tech, some shit like that. I don't know. But I knew he could help me put it together. But yeah, I asked him to help and he was in. We met up with my other friend who I've known much longer and he also agreed to help. Uh, the night before, I had finished my shift around 10 p.m., drove around for like five hours looking for locations, got them, laid them out, and... We began shooting. Already got prepared at Friday night gonna no get lit. Like those sockets in the way right around when the behind the quick trip, mall parking lot, up on the balcony of the mall, that was my favorite one. Uh and then after that we just sorta of chilled and we all split. Bro, what the fuck? 
that? Dangerous ass litter, bro. That's what that shit is. At that point, I knew the van needed to be in the video. So after shooting those first scenes, I went home and sketched out some potential shots we could do for the interior and exterior the next day. The only problem with all that was uh, I'd sent my friend a text asking if we could use the van, and I knew he was busy with work and shit, so I didn't expect him to reply immediately, but I think like a whole week went by until he finally got a response, and he was like, oh, well, I'm gonna have to ask my dad, or some shit like that, I can't remember. We were like, okay, bet, you know, just ready to make a fucking masterpiece. Five more days go by, until I broke the silence again. I reached out. Didn't hear anything from him for another four days. He hits me back up. He says, can't use the van. The transmission is being fixed. Sorry. And that was fine and all, but then I was just like stuck there on what to do because if the inspiration for the track came from that van and I'd already established the imagery by putting it on the single cover, but I can't use it, then what's sort of the point, you know? And then I started thinking. I asked myself, what if the video doesn't take place in 2021, but reminisces on it? And I was like, that's it. Because we didn't have to use the van at all or move it. We just needed it in the shot. I was going to have that van in the video one way or the other. And at the time, it was just chilling on his driveway. So I went home, rewrote the original intro into me leaving his house without the van. The original idea was we would all pull off in it when the beat started playing. And there would be shots inside and outside of it. But I scrapped that. Instead, the idea was I'd be leaving his house with my other friend who still would allegedly be inside the house, taking a shit or, or doing something, I don't know, waiting out front for him to finish, leaning on his car, and my eyes happened to cross paths with the van. I began reminiscing with it suddenly being interrupted from uh, my friend jump-scaring me, pressing the alarm button on his keys. You know, he comes over laughing, asks me if I'm good, I have a fuck-you attitude, before my other other friend pulls up, gets out of his car while we're both confused with something along the lines of Yo, to hit them off? and then there would be some bickering before they'd usher me into the car we'd all close the doors with the last one slamming shut as soon as the beat starts and then we pull off that's what i'd written the video being jump cuts from me rapping in the back seat of the car with solo shots at various locations leading up to the mall which conveniently matched the lyrics uh, it's funny because that's the one thing i didn't plan out uh we tried to film it on my other 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 friend's iphone but the lighting just wasn't good not only that but we only managed to get a couple of scenes before everyone's cinderella clock struck midnight and they all had to just split all of a sudden but then my other 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 friend who pulled up with my other friend told me he had an actual camera we could use and that changed the whole game what's the what's the script here oh, you, you see the wait before the, the, script, the script focus focus, 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 focus. focus. i rewrote the script 29 times trying to make this happen october just made its way around the corner but we had a camera now it was a canon rebel t7 and it was my other 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 friend's mom's I revised that script so many times it could have passed as a fucking reboot to what I originally had. Since my other other times two friend got the camera from his mom, you'd think he'd know how to use it fully, right? Yeah, I mean, he sort of did, but I think it's also safe to say there was way more to be learned about that piece of shit and how it worked. <laughs> so me and him met up at this uh, boba shop, and then he went over how the camera worked. We'd originally were going to try shooting that night, but some people couldn't make it, so we just decided to make good use of that time instead hello everybody uh welcome back to another episode of think of it and jot it down um walking around got alexios so, so, and yeah your boy just, yeah. Isaiah. Yeah, right. ended up walking around downtown lawrenceville took a couple unnecessary photos and some videos which later became some of the most clutch b-roll footage i've ever used for anything. And yeah, I just planned with them for the next weekend. Honestly, when this right. is filming, just make sure it's in focus. Like you might have to adjust the focus room a little bit. Another week goes by, then we start refilming with the Rebel. That was, that was <laughs> Bro, get this fat ass lit. We were gonna reshoot the one scene where I walk out of my friend's house to my other friend's car, but this time have my other, 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 other friend pull up instead of my other, other friend. Because my other, other friend at the time, he, uh, I don't know, he just wouldn't show up anymore. So I guess I just wrote him out of the script entirely. 
fucking bugs. Shit. We got there around six and waited like an hour or so for it to get darker. Then we began to film. <laughs> got your ass. Oh, we know. That was, oh that was my god, bro. Oh. <laughs> Damn, bro, you good? Shit. Damn, bro, you good? <laughs> Chronologically, if I were to lay out all the shots we got that night, they would range from the part where I'm leaving the house up to leaving the cul-de-sac, except we didn't leave the cul-de-sac. Well, well, didn't film it at least. Uh, we did like six or seven takes for the car jump scare, but after that, everyone needed a dip, but agreeing to come back later and try finishing the scene. Yeah, we, uh, we never did. Even till this day, I'm still unsure if the world just didn't want me to get the video done the way I envisioned it to be, or if I was just trying to accomplish something far out of my capabilities. It wasn't for another 40 hours of waking up, going to work, fixing the script while putting 30 on 13 30,000 times, then going home, finishing the revisions, falling asleep, and repeating until I started feeling like we were getting somewhere with the footage. All right, guys, be careful, bro. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you good? Ooh. What? I was thinking about jumping in the pool. Don't do it! Don't do it, bro! Okay, bro. No! Oh my God. It was then we were able to knock out the scenes with me on the bridge and a few takes of strolling by the shell. And I really enjoyed filming those shots. That shell actually is no longer there anymore. They tore it down like two weeks after we filmed, so... Yeah, good timing on our part. I'm your mom. Another 40 hours and we did the same thing for the scenes of me in the back of the car and so forth. We regrouped out of Barnes and Nobles that night beforehand and that also became useful later on in terms of footage. And from there, that's when things got difficult. I could be recording and he could be the one to The problem with that is, like he says, he doesn't want too many people in his car. So yeah, there's too much of a distraction, bro. Yeah. It was around the end of October when the group sort of gave up on the project entirely. And in simple terms, it just all fell apart and we ended up scrapping the whole thing. It became another unfinished idea amongst what felt like a warehouse of other unfinished ideas. Somebody once told me the world was gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. You was looking kind of lonely. Days turned into weeks, then months, and might as well have turned into years, but I think it wasn't until February of the following year when I was sitting in my room writing at like six in the morning when I got one of those remember this notifications on Snapchat. I tapped it and I, I saw the very story I uploaded exactly a year ago, telling everyone that I just dropped a new single, Maul. And I don't know what it was, but there was something about looking at that story again that reignited the spark. Not to just get the video done, but the whole project. Production has always been a major pet peeve when it comes to me dropping shit, because it's like one of the first impressions you make on people with your art, you know? And especially with this type of art today. And every track on that album wasn't really mixed to my satisfaction. In fact, Maul was the only track I recorded using earbuds. That's why you see me wear them in the video. You know, small details, you know? But I think that's what also made me realize that when you're doing the type of music I'm doing, whatever that music may be, you're gonna have to get a couple of tomatoes thrown at you before you reach that perfection. And even then, the true perfection isn't the end result, but the things you experience on that journey trying to get there. Uh, a journey to something that doesn't actually exist, but can convince others into thinking it does if it reaches a certain point and sounding better to them. I know I'm not gonna sound perfect starting off. However, I also know if I keep going, I can improve so much to the point where I won't have to anymore because most people will run out of things to shit on. But yeah, that's what was going through my head at the time. And after looking at the story, I started tapping through my snap memories. And that's when I realized most of these shots for the music video were already done. Or even better, they were done at a time where I wasn't worrying about fabricating them into a music video. There were just 12 to 20 second clips of experiences during the summer I graduated. <laughs> and that's what I needed all along. I ended up grabbing a combination of shots we were able to film and mix them in with behind the scenes footage and Snapchat memories from 2021. Did some overlay editing and yeah, I, 
I got it done. <laughs> well aware, night out with my friends, already got prepared. I'm proud of how the video came out. Didn't want to say it then, but probably because I didn't see how well it captured the nostalgia. Uh, it, it grew on me. Now, does it suck that I meant to put so much more into this video, but didn't? Yeah, but at the same time, you know you're going to have to learn and grow. Celebrate the victories you do get, and that goes for more than music, that goes for life. Damn, bro, you good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am. Fuck. while we were sitting down. Really? Yes. <laughs>